the 23rd regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the evening. Thank you, Mayor. People with good intentions make promises. People with good character keep them. Thank you very much. And then would you please call the roll? There are 16 present this evening. Thank you very much. Next, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of our minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. There's no resignation or mayor's appointments this evening. So the next item is the uh, public forum. City Clerk. Thank you. Um, this evening we have two people on public forum. First would be Alan Bratz. Alan, if you'd like to come up. And Alan, I just need your home address, please. Okay, and you will have five minutes and just make sure the mic is up so people can hear. <clears throat> and you can go ahead whenever. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf for my reimbursement of my damaged mailbox. When I returned from vacation last December 16th and found my mailbox and parts of the post in my garage, I was told by my neighbor that a snowplow driver who per his observation appeared generally inexperienced and hit my mailbox. He said my son then put the pieces into the garage when he came to check on the house. The next day after we returned, I went to the city clerk's office to submit a claim for the cost of the replacement of the mailbox, post, and labor for installation, or giving the city an opportunity to install it. I was surprised to be offered just a mailbox. In fact, one that is quite an inexpensive version compared to mine, and no post or installation. My mailbox was previously hit by a snowplow roughly 10 years ago. At, the, at that time, a city worker went to Home Depot to purchase the exact mailbox and post and then install it himself. To my knowledge, the placement from the curb was the exact distance the city would want. I don't understand why the city of Sheboygan would not assume the same responsibility as they did 10 years ago. Being offered a cheap version of mailbox felt like a slap in the face. To me, it's like saying, you drive a Cadillac and I hit it, but I only have to replace your Cadillac with a small Chevy. I pay considerable taxes to the city and feel it should include appropriate coverage for damage done to my property. I have a hard time thinking the city would accept only partial replacement if I damage city-owned property. I can still purchase the exact same mailbox and post as seen in the copies already provided for online purchases. At this time, I am asking the city to pay for a replacement of the mailbox and post that is identical to what the plow driver damaged and cover the installation. If you would like me to install the mailbox myself, my fee is included, uh, that includes materials and my time is also included in the paperwork already provided. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. And next on the list would be Jason Borden. Is Jason here? Jason, if you'd like to come up, please. And Jason, can I have your home address? Yes, 1023 North 29th Street. Okay, you'll have five minutes. Thank you. Um, how you doing today? Um, I, first of all, I wanna thank you all for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak before you. Um, some of you may know me, I've uh, been here for quite a few years. Uh, um, <clears throat> I served in Desert Storm some years ago, and um, I came home, I ended up uh, running out of the money that I had uh, saved up in the military and ended up finding myself homeless and penniless. And um, I started 
on a journey to try to figure out what am I going to do here? Am I going to lay down and just let myself go in Birmingham, Alabama, or am I going to pack my stuff and start heading north and maybe possibly run into some people I served with that could maybe help me get on my right path? Um, I was not a bad person. I didn't do anything that, that really uh, led me to this, except for I just fell on hard times. And um, as I made this journey up here, the first leg of the journey was over 300 miles, or roughly somewhere close to that. <coughs> Um, I got so weak to the point to where when I called my friend when I first arrived to his neighborhood to ask him if uh, I could stay by, by him for a couple of days so I could get on my feet. But then I found myself, I lost the strength. I'd given up because I'd walked as far as I could, and I laid down on my duffel bags until he arrived. Now, when he came up to me, I was laying on the duffel bags. I could not get up. My friend from Desert Storm came out, and he came walking up to me. He goes, you know, you're my brother. This isn't going to happen to you. He picked me up, and he put me in his car. And that changed my life forever. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's really important. I do a lot of work for veterans. I don't know if you've seen the yellow ribbons going up and down 8th Street a couple of times, a couple of years back. Me and my wife and some other people did that to, to show support of the troops. But through the process of working for veterans nowadays, I, I also work with the Sheboygan uh, Veterans Court. And every day I see soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen that are suffering from the same kind of thing that what I went through. And they're really hard to see because they don't like to show this type of pain that they felt in their lives in public because it, it feels to them like it's a thing of weakness. Um, so what I'm asking right now basically is for us to, as a city to recognize the fact that these people are out amongst us everywhere. And as we go through our daily lives, we're losing 22 a day. And these are great people that went and fought for our country for no other reason because they believed in the American way of life. And I understand that the Sheboygan Armory is uh, scheduled to possibly be voted on to be demolished. Well, there's, a, there's an organization down in Milwaukee I've been working with called Dry Hooch. They've done some absolutely amazing things and wonderful things for our soldiers. And as uh, we see people going through Sheboygan court, um, we, there's a few of them in particular that we thought this were never going to make it, that their lives were just basically in turmoil and we weren't going to be able to turn it around. And they started going to Dry Hooch and we started seeing miraculous turnarounds. It saved their lives. Just like my brother, when he picked me up and he says, this ain't happened to you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I just don't want this to happen to anybody else. And right now we have that organization that's very interested and very motivated to come up here to Sheboygan and set up something for these people. And I mean, we're not just talking Sheboygan, but any, any veteran that ever served around here could use the services. And at Army, they're willing to, to come forward and, and do what needs to be to try to procure the building. Um, I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of veterans groups, and they're all behind this. And um, all I'm asking for right now is I know that you're planning on voting for this tonight and whether or not you're going to demolish the building. But with Dry Hooch expressing that kind of interest, uh, I have a meeting set up with the mayor and the president tomorrow. And they're going to be coming up and, and basically uh, lay out what they were possibly able to do. And um, I'm just asking that maybe we could hold off on voting to have it demolished because I think it's a, an absolutely wonderful building. Um, there was a specialist, Chuck Kaiser, that served for his country and ended up losing his life over there. Um, when he came home, we held a funeral at the armory, and it was one of the saddest things I ever saw in my entire life, but it was such an am amazing event. I did a welcome home for the 330th Military Police, which there was a female that came home for just a short period of leave that said she wasn't a hero. She didn't believe she was, but we decorated the city. We came together, and we showed her that she was a hero right there at that building. You know, the 121st that was deploying to replace the 127th, deployed over there and what we did with the city came together again and we decorated uh, yellow ribbons and flags and everything we had that ceremony down there and it was beautiful we said goodbye to those soldiers and four of them never came home well um, now we still live in society where they're everywhere and they're amongst us and they need places to go they just need somebody to say hey I'm your brother I'm not gonna let this happen to you so what I'm asking the city to do right now is to recognize that there is a group that is interested in this that may possibly be able to do whatever you guys need to save this building and in return, we could provide a safe haven for these people that are just trying to get back on their feet. I'm, I don't mean to talk about my story. I don't talk about it too much. But, you know, like I say, if it wasn't for my friend to pick me up that one time to tell me, hey, you're not gonna let, we're not going to let this happen to you. I lost so much weight, I ended up in a hospital suffering from malnutrition and dehydration. But without my brother, I wouldn't have even made it that far. And there's plenty of other ones out there that we could save just by providing a safe place. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the dry hooch right this second. I'd rather them talk about what they do, but I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're an amazing group. It's, it's a mentor support program, veterans helping other veterans. I know we have the VA and all kinds of other programs, but this is one of the few that actually uh, 
has veterans that served standing right beside other veterans, and it seems to show them a little bit of comfort. Excuse and, me, Jason. Sorry. You're five minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Our next item on the agenda is a report on our citizen incident reporting program. David Augustin, our IT director, has got a program for us this evening. David, please step forward. Good song. Bernie's a good band. <laughs> we could watch Netflix. <laughs> Not interested in the hunt. <laughs> and then you get to see it. When that comes back, basically what I'm going to be demoing is, is two new portals that our software company that we partner with, um, Mutis and Tyler Technologies, uh, have been, came out with two new portals for people to report incidents, non-emergency incidents out in the public using mobile devices, as well as a new web portal that um, we can use. And it's much easier. So I heard the chiming go away. So. That's fine. Um, while that's going, one of the directions that Tyler is taking, or Munis, why we're partnering with it, is they are starting to go more down the mobile device road as far as, there we go, as far as um, making it easier for the system to report. So I'm going to go with this. So, first one I'm going to start to demo is the actual web portal piece. And that should have come up. Yes, it did. And this you'll be able to get right from our website um, if you want to report <coughs> um, through a regular browser, which right now is just my Android tablet, as well as a regular PC or whatever. But when it comes up to the home screen along the side, along the side you can see the latest um, incidents have been and what the status is in, and even on the map it has the dots on where they're located. So what we can do is <coughs> click on one for the information and then it'll pop up with the information on it. So kind of a history of what's kind of a history of what's going on out in the city as far as that goes. The next tab is where actually new incidents can be submitted. So it brings us to a portal map and we can then key in an address. So I'm just gonna do like eight, two, eight. <clears throat> and T, 
Center Avenue, and then it remembers, except my keyboard's in the way, there we go. So that way then we can put in, here's the information, it has the location, we can, so here are the different types of things that are going on that people can put on, like DPW has theirs, um, city development, building inspection, et cetera, where you can select one of these. Let's just say it's a code enforcement. You can then enter in a description, and it'll even give you similar incidents were reported near here. <coughs> um, if you have a picture, you know, that let's say there's a pothole or whatever you're reporting on, there's a picture, you even have the option then to upload the picture, either to take the picture through your camera or other in examples you may have of files. And then you can put in your information first, last, your phone number and email. And where that is important is anything that's submitted will not show up anybody's name out on the portal. So it's still anonymous. But what's nice to have is the information if we have to contact you back to follow up on something. So, and then basically then you would just hit the submit as far as that. Um, the next thing that it also does is it'll give you a list of, you can search by what incidents are out there based on date ranges. And a couple other little portals is the dashboards or what we're referring to as citizen transparency. So it's kind of a report card on how the city is doing and responding to requests, which is kind of nice as well, so it's a little bit of a report card. And it's taking a little bit longer because it's crunching through the data, obviously. To give it a little bit. There it is. So this way you can see here, top five incident categories, snow removal, obviously with winter there's three incident count. And then it goes average days to close these things, so it kind of gives a report card of the um, different things. The other thing it gives up there is number of incidents opened. So far this year, 61. This month, 12. And the number of incidents completed so far this year. And the count is 9 this month. So it gives you a nice way to report uh, non-emergency type issues into the city. And this way then it also, so things don't fall through the cracks, what happens is, is when you submit something, it goes right to the person who's designated to be in charge of that type or subject matter. So if it's DPW, it'll route to them, they get a notification of it. If it's building inspection, Chad's inspectors are all set up to respond to the different types <coughs> in their area as well. So that's the web version or the portal. Um, we also have the other thing called click to report. And this is the actual mobile app, so if you want to use it on your phones, you can install it on your phones, tablets, or whatever, but it's basically a mobile app that it has Android and the iOS or iPhone, iPad that you can get right from the, either the Google Play Store or the iTunes for the respective thing, but they both work very much the same. One little difference is, is you can set your contact information up in this app, so you always don't have to put your information in for putting in an incident. If you want to do a new request, it works very much the same way. Here's the requests. So I could pick one. So it's pulling in the information. And what it tries to do is the last location you were at, it will, it will pull in the address. But you can obviously change it and edit the address. Same thing, you can do a description. And it pulls your name and contact information in, which again, remains anonymous. The other way you can add a new request is if we go to, let's see, this one has the map, I believe. I'm cheating now. Recent request. There we go. Here again, the same thing. It will give you for recent requests. It'll give you the list of the items that are out there. If you want to display on one, it'll bring it up with the picture and again, you can see there's no personal information on there, but if you want to leave a comment on it, you can leave a comment on it. Or if you want to share it with somebody else via email or Twitter, you can share it that way. Um, there's a map feature. Oops, I was zoomed in a little too close before. 
And here you can see the same type of thing happens is it'll mark where there are incidents. Or what I can do is what's my location, it'll take me to it. Or mark it as my location, which then I can use for um, additionally adding new incidents. Uh, you can actually also, if there's requests you want to keep track of, you can follow it. I don't have any set up, but you know, like you have favorites and internet or something, you can do the same type of thing. So if you want to keep track on the um, request of it. Uh, the other thing is if I go to Twitter, I can set myself up on Twitter and do tweets. Um, it takes us to the city website automatically. Um, and again, if I go here, Twitter, these are all geared to the, all the tweets or entries that the city of Sheboygan has sent out as well for information. So it's a nice tool for you know, people to report things in a easy, more easily manner using you know, mobile devices. So if you're coming through by things, because a lot of times nowadays you don't have a laptop just sitting there ready to go if you wanna report something. So that's what we put in. And this is ready to go now. There's no cost to download the app or use it. It's all free for the public, anybody, employees, whoever to use. So that's what I have. Cool. Any questions? Seeing none, David, thank you very much for the presentation and thanks for getting all this up and running. And uh, if you just stay in the chambers until the mayor's announcements, I'd appreciate it. Okay, our next presentation is going to be uh, on our strategic plan uh, that will cover the 2017 action items and critical measures. Uh, re reviewing those items, uh, Daryl Hufflin, our administrator, will be making this presentation. In January of this year, uh, the City Council approved the City's Strategic Plan 2017 to 2021. Uh, th this effort was kicked off uh, in summer of last year. Included in the process was a community survey. Uh, many of you participated in a retreat. Uh, and then there was an open house at the uh, Senior Senior Center. Uh, critical part of the Strategic Plan uh, were six focus areas, which were up on the screen quality life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and communication. The next slide uh, identifies just one of those areas, which is the quality of life. The sheet that was distributed tonight has all six of those focus areas, and again, it's broken uh, out on each page by action item and by critical measures. Action items are, are self-explanatory in that they're items that staff is working on your behalf. Uh, oftentimes, uh, committee commissions or boards of the council are involved, uh, but uh, oftentimes it is staff uh, initiated. You can see the columns, uh, assign, assigned department, and then the start date, either it's already started or uh, in some cases uh, projected start date or initiation, and then actual target or completion date. And then there's additional information such as percentage of completion. And then uh, so, some notes, footnotes that uh, department heads felt might be helpful uh, for you. Uh, my goal is for this to be updated on a quarterly basis so you can keep track of how staff is progressing in meeting the action items and uh, as far as benchmarking, making progress um, where we're at. Uh, in, in meeting those uh, benchmarks or, or tracking those benchmarks. Again, up, up on the screen, we have quality of life action items and then quality of life cri critical measures. Uh, in some cases, if you compare 
some of the uh, critical measures in this document to what was distributed tonight. Uh, we have tweaked or fine-tuned some of the uh, critical measures to make them more meaningful to you. Uh, I hope that many of the department heads will, in fact, be able to provide you an update on a monthly basis. So as an example, Public Protection and Safety Committee, when they meet, uh, oftentimes some of these measures will be given to you on a monthly basis. But at minimum, we're looking for quarterly, um, quarterly updates uh, will be provided to you within a month or two of that quarter being completed. I wanted to keep it short tonight, but wanted to let you know that uh, this document has not been put on the shelf by staff uh, gathering dust. Uh, city is actively working to uh, identify ways in which we can improve our communication with you as to progress that we're making uh, both in the action items and the critical measures. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daryl. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. I'd like to have Dave Augustin again approach the uh, front of the room. This is David's uh, last week here at Sheboygan County. He's worked for the city of Sheboygan from January of 2011 through March of 2017. Uh, he gave us six years of dedicated service and we really appreciated that. During this time, David managed all the city's IT needs, kept all departments connected, uh, when the city purchased the MUNIS program, David helped each department to migrate their uh, activities to this new platform. Um, the presentation tonight is just another example of Dave's efforts to get the full use of the MUNIS software for the city and its residents. He was also involved uh, with the county as we put the ring of fiber in around the city to uh, make sure that we had uh, ample volume of broadband to use for all of our needs. Dave was also responsible for WSCS and was a regular on city desk in his own program, A Closer Look. Now, while David's moving to the North Woods, you can still see him on the WSCS video on demand, so you can catch his reruns there. <laughs> but David, I'd like to present you the Certificate of Appreciation for your six years of dedicated service. Thank you so much. one correction on your speech it's quality of life not a closer look okay. that's the only difference but anyway <laughs> reruns are available so um, as we had our staff meeting this morning for department heads um, I'm going to borrow a quote that chief Romas always uses when he's in our meetings and he always says it's an honor and privilege to be here and I have to echo that, but add to it, it is an honor and privilege to be here, but it also has been an honor and a privilege to work with everybody and work together and you know, bring our city forward. As I said, I think the next couple of years are gonna be really breakout years, both in the terms of where we're going, you know, services and our organizational structure as well as technology. So it's been wonderful. And the other thing I just wanted to say is, uh, because I'm leaving, it's not because I am disgruntled or unhappy or anything because if this opportunity would not have come I would be retiring here at the city you know as far as that goes I would finish it out here um, but my goal is to retire in northern Wisconsin we have property up there and a place to stay and this just came out of the sky and boom there it was so I'm actually going to be moving up there which is 10 years ahead of my goal to being up there so um Plus, it kind of rounds my career. I started in manufacturing, then I went to healthcare, now I'm in government, and now I'll be going to the gaming commission working at the casino. So I want to thank oh, you all for working all right. with you. So, Next, I'd, I'd like to ask Sam Gatmeyer to approach the front of the room. Sam is the executive director of the John Michael Kohler Art Center, and this is a special proclamation for uh, Art, Youth Art Month, a proclamation declaring March of 2017 as Youth Art Month. Uh, to, all whom, to all whom these presents may come, greetings. 
Whereas an education contributes powerful educational benefits to all elementary and secondary students, and whereas art education develops creative problem solving and critical thinking abilities, and whereas art education teaches sensitivity to beauty, order, and other expressive qualities, and whereas art education gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs, and whereas art education reinforces and brings to life what students learn in other subjects, whereas art education interrelates student learning in art production, art history, and art criticism and aesthetics, and whereas our national leaders have acknowledged the necessity of including art experiences in a student's education, therefore be it resolved that support should be given to art teachers as they attempt to strengthen art education in their schools and communities. Now therefore, I'm Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and hereby proclaim March of 2017 is Youth, Youth Art Month. All citizens are urged to take interest and give full support to quality school art programs for children and youth. And I'd like to present this to Sam and, and wish him all the best in the art activities that they have planned at the John Michael Kohler Art Center. Thank Would you, you like to say anything? On, on Sunday, we opened a wonderful exhibit of art from uh, K through 12 students throughout the county and really had an amazing turnout. 1,215 people came to see the students. When you have time, come by the Art Center and take a, a look. I'm sure it'll be worth your while. So thank you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your support. Thank you much. And the uh, last item I'd like to bring up is uh, the second issue of our city newsletter. Our e-newsletter is available on the website. Uh, we also have a new name for the newsletter. It's called the Sheboygan Insider. I'd like to thank Chad Pelichick for coming up with the name, which was voted on by our employees. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys that. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is a hearing. Item 2.1 is a hearing number 16 of 1617 to propose an amendment to the city of Sheboygan's fiscal year 2016-2017 community block grant annual action plan for the five-year consolidated plan. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderperson Donahue? Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, uh, move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is closed. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. This will include items 3.2 through 3.25. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, all the person born. Thank you, Mayor. I was wondering if we could bring forward item number 3.7 for a separate vote. I need to abstain on that one, please. Okay, 3.7 is before us. Is there any discussion on 3.7? <coughs> See Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen ayes and one abstention. Motion passes. Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually have six items I would like broken out. They are 3.8, 3.9, 3.13, 3.14, 3.17, and 3.20. Okay, can, can you repeat those again, Alderman Jose? Certainly. 3.8, okay. 3.9, yep. 13, 14, 17, and 20. 
And you'd like a separate vote on each one, or are any of them tied together? They all seem to be um, have a common theme, if that helps. So they, uh, I would like to have discussion on them. On the group or each individual one? Uh, on the group. It could be on the group. Okay, so the ones that have been identified are on the floor for discussion. Uh, please uh, proceed with discussion, Alderperson Jose. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I was reviewing these, it seems that a large number of these happen to do with uh, city plow trucks that have either struck down a mailbox, mailbox pardon me, as the gentleman who spoke at the open forum here. Uh, I think there were, it was at least two or three mailboxes that have been struck down, um, some cars that have been damaged, and things of that nature by city plow trucks. And it, it's, it's my opinion that um, if we've got somebody out there that is damaging private property while working for the city, um, maybe we should explore suspending their driving privileges. I don't know if we need to put something like we require of drunk drivers where you have to blow into something before you operate a city vehicle. But I think it's not responsible on the part of the city to be denying these claims when there seems to be a common theme here that somebody at the Department of Public Works is striking mailboxes and cars and things of that nature. And um, if, if I, as a private citizen, outside of my capacity as an alderman, if I ran into somebody's car or their mailbox or something like that, I would be required to pay. And if the city is negligent, I think they should pay. And maybe we need to do an investigation uh, into if there's a common theme. Is this the same neighbor? Do all these people live in the same neighborhood? What's going on that there is all this damage to mailboxes and, and uh, other private property uh, by the city uh, plow trucks. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Schneider. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was uh, just about to repeat on Alderman Ho um, Hussein's comments on 313 and 314 to be referred back to finance for further discussion. Is there any objection to a motion to refer those two back to finance? No objection. Okay, we'll take items uh, 3.13 and 3.14. Is there a second to that motion to refer back to finance? I second it. We have the second. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those, uh, we'll just just voice vote. All those in favor of referring those back to finance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, uh, Alderperson Holshue. Questions been answered, but I'm wondering about three nine. If there's some, um, who, who did the damage? City attorney, could you respond? Three point nine. Uh, this was alleged damages to an apartment door and lock. Uh, what happened in this particular case is that the fire department went into a building where there was an emergency, um, and were <coughs> unable at that point in the dark. Uh, to get to the Knox box. The Knox box was blocked by some um, foliage and so they were unable to see it and so they had to break the door down. Um, in this case, as in all of these, there was uh, an investigation done and no negligence by the city. Thank you. Okay. Um, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. Sometimes on the face of it, these determinations, particularly when they're just these brief recitals of facts seem unfair. Um, it has been my experience that the city attorney and staff really do very thoroughly investigate these matters. The city needs to be negligent in order for it to be required to pay. And sometimes the city is negligent and sometimes at finance, um, uh, and I, I'm not even sure I think there were some claims that, in fact, I'm quite sure there were a couple of claims where uh, the recommendation was for the city to accept responsibility and pay. A couple of different things. One, um, there is a full discussion at the finance department. If anyone is interested, interested to come to listen to all of the facts, uh, Attorney Adams really presents us, I think, with a fairly full picture of what happened. The second thing is this concept of negligence, I think, is real important. We cannot pay every claim that comes into us just because it is a claim. 
In other words, the, the person making the claim needs to prove some kind of negligence. Um, I would ask Alderman Jose to attend the finance committee meeting. I think any allegations that somehow city staff is either drunk or wildly negligent or unable to drive a snowplow is probably untrue. Uh, and I, I don't want anyone leaving this meeting with some sort of sense that wildly negligent behavior on the part of, of um, uh, uh, city employees is happening. So for those matters which are referred back to the Finance Committee, please come to the committee meeting. We can't redo these, I mean, uh, we could. Uh, finance could do it and then we could go through the same thing at this meeting. Um, but again, the committee structure is, is for us to look at it as a committee, bring it to the council and then hopefully have a resolution that way. But by all means, come to the Finance Committee meetings and, and listen, to, listen to what the negligence arguments are. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, I agree with uh, most of what Alderman Donahue just uh, stated. I would like to take 3.20 separately. Okay, uh, we'll pull 3.2 out from the batch of four, and so that's on the floor for discussion. Okay, I, I'm a uh, member of the Finance Committee. I attended the meeting. I heard the explanation. Um, from uh, the city attorney and uh, what appears to happen there's there's no facts in dispute a a plow uh, dislodged and hit a, a manhole cover the manhole cover became airborne and was propelled into a vehicle <coughs> and uh, there was some damage sustained uh, well uh, it was in the normal operation of a plow truck and there was no negligence deemed there was a cause in effect Manhole covers don't just spontaneously levitate and propel themselves into cars. There was a reason that this happened and a causation to it. And uh, I put myself in the shoes of this individual who all of a sudden got hit by a flying manhole cover and uh, you know there was a cause to it. The plow driver uh, acknowledged and stopped and you know, was very conscientious and noticed something happened. Um, and there, there was some damage obviously that was done, but. I think for the city just to ignore this and just say, you know what, sometimes manhole covers fly and hit cars. And, you know, I think that's, you know, irresponsible. And, you know, the city should take some responsibility here and, and pay something towards the damage. Thank you for those comments. So we're discussing item 3.2 uh, exclusively right now. Two zero. Other person, Jose. Two zero. Um, 3.20, I'm sorry. Right. On 3.9, I agree with the city. I understand that. We're just 3.20 right now. 3.20 right now? Yes, please. Um, well, I agree with Alderman Belger. I would make a motion to refer it back to finance. Second. We have a motion to refer back to finance. Any other discussion on the referral? Alderperson Donahue? Just so we understand that there are consequences to our action here. Causation is one issue. And then negligence is the second issue. And so our legal staff has determined that the city was not negligent in this respect. We have insurance to pay for these claims. Yes. <laughs> and if we start paying claims for which we are not legally responsible, more and more people will be coming in and saying, gee, it just doesn't seem fair. And that negligence link will be lost and our insurance rates will start to go up. I'm happy to have this come back to committee, but whoever votes in favor of referring it to the committee, it would be great if you could come to the committee meeting and listen to the reasoning and, so that, that it's, it's crystal clear. So just, I'm just saying it may seem like a nice thing to do, but it has ongoing impact for the financial uh, condition of the city. Probably not huge, but if we start paying claims for which we are not negligent, there will be many more to follow, I can guarantee. Thank you very much for those comments. I had two other lights on. Alderperson Wolf, did you have any comments on this one? No, I'm done. Thank okay. you. Okay, and um, Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I, I think that I agree with the city attorney's comments on 3.9, so I'm withdrawing any discussion on that. However, I want to make, 
first I want to make a comment and then I want to make a motion. Um, the, uh, my comment uh, is that I am willing to attend any city finance committee meeting that occurs after 5.30 or 6 o'clock when most people are done with the working day. If, they, if the city wants to have committee meetings before a normal person who holds a job in this world, uh, they, should, um, they should have scheduled them after the workday has ended. I can't attend meetings at 2 o'clock, therefore it's gratuitous to suggest I tend to attend a city finance committee meeting. That would, be, would cause me to, to lose time from work. Um, I would like to make, the, we've discussed most of them. I would, are we, well, do we still need to vote on 3.2? Yeah. Yes, we need to vote on the, okay. on the referral back to committee. Is there any other discussion on the referral? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion. Aye. Okay, we need to take a vote. I'm sorry. Floor is yours. Thank you. Your voting should open. So an I vote is to send it to? To send it to finance. It's okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Brian? Should Got it. Sorry. Susie? Got it. <coughs> 12 eyes, four no's. Motion passes. So, uh, Alderperson Jose, did you say you wanted to retract your um, separating 3.9? That's correct. And then I would make a motion on 3.8 and 3.17 to refer them back to finance. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? No second. Motion dies for lack of a second. So we're, we're voting then on, on the passage of these items that have been separated, 3.8, 3.17, and 3.2. And the motion uh, that was made originally on the consent agenda was to approve all those. So that motion is on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, Mayor, can I just say, didn't we just vote on 3.20 to refer it to finance? Yes. So we you're, you're correct. I'm so sorry. Yep. So it's just 3.8 and 3.17. Okay. What? You're going to have to hold on. I'm going to have to reverse some things. Under discussion, Alder Person Holshue? No. Alderman Jose, who seconded the motion to refer it to finance? There was no second. There was eight, no second. I, I think because we broke them out, we're, we either have to vote. Uh, we can either vote aye or no, or we can put them back in with the rest <laughs> of the This was the original agenda. motion to separate these items. Right, but I don't have a second. No, that was made earlier in the meeting. I know. So just those items were on the floor, and they're still on the floor. Pardon? You're asking who seconded it to pull up? It was Andy, wasn't it? City Attorney? Oh, Where are we with 13, 13 I don't know who seconded the motion that's to pull a, that's up. That's my question. Oh. Yeah. 14. I've got that one, but I, I believe, Mr. Mayor, I believe with no second, those items can be just put back in with the consent agenda. All right, if there's no objection to that suggestion, that's what we'll do. So the next vote will be for the entire consent agenda, except for the ones we've already dealt with, 3.13, 3.14, and 3.2. Zero. Zero. Oh. And um, okay. is there any other discussion on those remaining items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sure. <laughs> okay, hold on.
Okay. This is for the entire consent other than the ones we've dealt with. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Uh, the, item 4.1 is RO number 233 of 1617 by the Transit Commission, who met and discussed resolution number 191 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing entering into a contract for the provision and performance of a parking study for downtown Sheboygan, and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass resolution. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that. The motion is on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wonder if you could tell me how much this study is going to be costing and where the money is coming from. Chad, can you please educate us on that? This was an item that was budgeted in the 2017 capital improvements program. It's the funding's coming from the TIF district number 16, the downtown district, and the cost is $42,000. And what the consultant will be doing is analyzing our current parking situation downtown, determining if there's a need for as many lots, looking <coughs> at our on-street parking and interviewing all our business owners and getting their interest in what our parking situation should look like and coming forward and making third-party recommendations on how we should deal with parking in the downtown. Under discussion, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and I would just point out that Sheboygan Squared is kicking in $3,600 of uh, the cost of the, um, of the study is reflected in the resolution if I understood it properly. Thank you for that information. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was gonna ask if Chad could tell us when the last um, uh, review was done. Thank you, Chad. The last time we completed a parking study was I believe 1979, so we're a little due for looking at our current situation. Okay, Alder Person Bellinger. If it Thank makes you, you feel better, I was one year old at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was graduating from law school. Sorry, information. Thank you. <laughs> um, Chad, I'm wondering if you could tell us what is the annual parking revenue for the city? The parking meters bring in about 180,000, I believe, 140, 180, somewhere in there. Um, we have a number of downtown parking assessment districts, so whatever we bring in from revenues on the meters, that goes into defraying the cost of that's the money that then is assessed out to the businesses. So then they get a monthly, a yearly parking assessment bill uh, for that, but the, it's just not as easy as taking out the parking meters because we have to pick up that revenue somewhere. And it's gonna, if we take out parking meters, I don't know if this is where your question is going, but if we take out the parking meters and look at that whole sit side of things, um, we're gonna be faced with our businesses paying some pretty high parking assessments. So it's really kind of balancing act here to figure out the best way to handle that and it's the, in our mind the best way to hire a third party consultant to work with our businesses and get an outside opinion on how to deal with parking. That's, I appreciate the answer. That's not where I was going. I was going more in line with uh, when we wanted to do a parking study, it was 59, or a, uh, a fire study, it was $59,000 for an $8 million um, annual budgeted item. And this is, you know, 100 to 300,000, and we're spending 42,000 for this. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I'm gonna support it because um, I do not believe, like some other people do, that um, our um, directors and, uh, are the subject matter, matter experts on every subject that comes before this body. And we do need some outside um, expertise in certain instances. So I'm gonna support this, but again, I'm, uh, you know, I, I find it strange that, you know, you know, when we have something that's that much bigger and has that much more of an impact, 
that we decide that we're not going to support, you know, a study that would, you know, I, you know, potentially save us, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So um, it's, it's just frustrating to me. Thank you Thank for you. those comments, Alder Person Bellinger. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes, six no's. Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.12 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 will lie over till our next meeting. Items 5.2 through 5.4 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 342 of 1617 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom was referred RO number 200 of 1617 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications and recommends denying beverage operators license number 1498 based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion. Is Dustin Tweeten here? Dustin is not here. He did not attend our meeting as well after being requested on um, two different opportunities. So he was denied based on his failure to cooperate with our committee. Thank you for that information. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 343 of 1617 by the Lawn Licensing Committee, whom was referred RO number 223 of 1617 by the City Clerk, submitting various license applications and recommends denying the transient merchant license number ap application 1650 based upon his failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations related to the license activity and his record as a repeat law offender. Alder Person Holshue. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Yes. Is Mitchell Williams here? Mr. Williams is um, not here today. He did come and did appear before us um, in our committee meeting and due to the information that we had gotten from city <clears throat> attorney and um, reference from the city clerk's office, we denied um, him a transient merchant license he was working for the company um, Kirby and had a number of issues that we were really uncomfortable with to include um, some burglaries etc that were um, dismissed without prejudice which means they can be open at any time so um, it, but everyone on the committee agreed that we should deny this license thank you for that Report. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 6.3 is RC number 344 of 1617 by the Law and Licensing Committee to whom is referred RO number 223 of 1617 by the City Clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends denying taxi cab drive, driver's license application number 1151 based upon his failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderperson Holt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Is Marcos Marina Katsas here? He is not here tonight, but he did appear at our um, committee meeting. 
he was looking to get a um, taxi cab driver's license and unfortunately there were a number of different traffic violations as well as not having insurance, um, no driver, valid driver's license to which he said he currently did have a driver's license. We did ask did he have insurance and he said no and I did ask him did you drive to our committee meeting today and he said yes. So apparently following the laws of our city um, aren't in his repertoire. So our committee all agreed to deny his license. Thank you for that report. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice job. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 6.4 is RC number 346 of 1617 by finance to whom was referred resolution number 195 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish an appropriation for environmental re remediation costs related to the Portscape apartment project and recommends the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? <laughs> 14 eyes, two noes. Motion passes. 6.5 is RC number 347 of 1617 by the Finance Committee to whom was referred resolution number 198 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue authorizing the purchasing agent to prepare and issue a request for bids for demolition and request for proposals for the redevelopment of the armory property located at 1, excuse me, at 516 Broughton Drive and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, before hearing the speaker that spoke here tonight, I was going to make a motion to, uh, instead of spending money on another city study um, on, the, on the cost for this demolition, I was going to suggest that the, the city put out a, uh, a contract with a realtor to try and sell this property. Because it seems very amazing to me that for a couple of years this property was worthless and then all of a sudden when the Milwaukee Bucks had an interest in the property, magically this, the property was no longer worthless and there was a great zeal with saving the building and saving the armory and, and uh, even improving it. And now that the Bucks have passed on the Sheboygan Armory as an opportunity, amazingly, magically the, city, the property is worthless again. And I think that there might be others interested in this property. I was originally going to suggest that we uh, just forego this study and, uh, for the demolition and, um, and contract with a realtor. But I am interested in the, the speaker we had uh, and the veterans group um, that he mentioned having interest in the property. So I'd instead like to just uh, make a motion to hold this resolution. Second. Okay, we have a motion to hold. Is there a second? We have a second. Is that debatable? A motion to hold? Yeah, you can debate it. Any, do, any discussion on holding? Alderperson Donahue. Um, this is actually um, <clears throat> a proposal to uh, allow Bernie Romer uh, to put out bids uh, for the cost of uh, demolishing the armory. We're not sure what the cost is. Um, it's going to be expensive. Um, again, just so there's no question that there's somehow unsavory uh, or inappropriate motivation going on here, the city um, has spent very considerable time uh, starting, I think, in 2014, Chad, um, really uh, spending a lot of time with developers. <laughs> We did actually have two proposals uh, for uh, developing um, apartments uh, on the site. Um, 
and none of those worked. Um, we did have an offer uh, on the building to demolish and build um, the C's, um, the Sheboygan Education Association for Sailing uh, and Boat Storage. Unfortunately, the Historical Preservation Committee voted to put that proposal on hold for 90 days, and after the end of 90 days, unfortunately, the, the potential buyer was no longer interested. Um, it's not that we suddenly value or devalue the building. The building is in very, 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 very bad shape. There's just no getting around it. I've walked through it step by step, and I think Chad would be happy to take any alder here who would like to go through it. Just make sure you got boots on, okay? And there are a lot of wet parts that you'll have to walk through, and you don't want to slip and fall. It's a pretty fascinating building, and I have been on that tour. Um, I am overwhelmed by what it would take to get it up and running. I think it's 52,000 square feet. Um, and um, I, was, I, I was just interested. I found out from Bernie that the daily cost to keep the heat on in the building just above freezing is $150. And that's just above freezing. Um, so it, when the bucks were here, as I understood it, I didn't have firsthand information. The rehab costs are in the range of three to five million, but you're rehabbing a 52,000 square foot building. So if you're having a small nonprofit that is interested in being in the building, that's great. But I think for this to work would require a substantial consortium of either business interests or uh, nonprofit organizations who have really, really deep, deep, deep pockets. Um, it's sad, it's a nice old building. A lot of us have memories there. I do, um, unlike Chad, who was born in 1979, <laughs> I, uh, I was... Uh, 78. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the plain fact is, is that all we're trying to do here is get some bids to figure out how much it's gonna cost to take it down. I think there, once it's down, there are gonna be some, there's gonna be interest in developing the land, which I think is quite valuable. Um, uh, but I think we really just do need to authorize Bernie just to go ahead, put out the bids, or the request for bids, and see and see what kind of response we get, and then we can uh, figure out where we want to go from there. I can guarantee you, I can affirm that the city has turned itself inside out for the last four years, really trying to figure out a good use for the building. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Truster. I guess I'm just wondering that um, if we couldn't just hold it to find out if this group really would be interested in it and then if they're not, we're, we're in the same boat we're in now. So I don't think it would hurt for us to put it off a month or two months before we make any decisions on tearing it down or if even getting bid on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is um, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree with Mary Lynn. Um, I don't think putting out to get bids 30 days from now or 60 days from now is gonna to matter to her point, but I understand her point. The weather's getting warmer. The heat doesn't need to be turned on to keep it warm. Soon it will be changing. And I think um, if a Veterans Association is going to be backing this group, which by the way is a fabulous group, um, federal government and the veterans have very, very deep pockets. I think we need to afford them the opportunity to make a request. And if the armory doesn't work for them, perhaps there's another area in Sheboygan that might. So if we postpone this, they are meeting with the mayor tomorrow, I understand. If we postpone this for 30 days, I don't think anything terrible will happen. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderperson Jose. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I, I want to echo the comments of Alderperson Trester and Holshu, and and uh, I just want to say that I, I I'm going to have to very soon tour this building because I I hear I I've heard a half a dozen people tell me that the building is is great and it's not in poor condition. And those that see, you know one person can look at a building if, if they live in a building that is less than ten years old and everything is pristine and brand new and and fantastic and in new age even, they, uh, the, it, they go to a building that's dilapidated, it has a leaking roof, 
or needs a few repairs, uh, their opinion may be entirely great, different. Uh, if you take a homeless person that goes there and they're like, this building's fantastic. This building has so much potential. Or an investor or a person that's into re rehabbing or flipping properties might think this is great. And and uh, so I, I'm not convinced that, uh, I don't think that these these uh, entrepreneurs were willing to invest three to $5 million in, in, in putting forth this box project without seeing some potential in the building. And um, for that reason, and more importantly, the veterans group have an interest, I'm gonna be voting in, in favor of my motion to hold the study. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lewandowski. Yes, I mentioned this at the finance committee meeting last week, but I talked to somebody that does have interest in the armory. They feel that it would be a, a very good building for themselves but they aren't quite ready to announce their plans for it yet. I also know of somebody that is willing to donate the manpower and materials to patch the roof for now so that there's not more damage occurring inside the armory from the leaking roof. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderperson Donahue, did you have anything else? Uh, just briefly. I all, all this resolution does is author, authorize Bernie to send out requests for bids. It does not pledge us to any action. It is an important piece of the information that we'll have. I am looking forward to the people who are going to come forward with deep pockets to repair the building, and I think we would all be open to that. We're looking at three to five million dollars is, is, is the thought, but there may be people out there who want to do that and have a business plan for 52,000 square feet that will make a great deal of sense to us. All we're trying to do though is figure out if that doesn't work, how much is it gonna cost to tear the building down? And that's information that we get. And there's nothing wrong with having information. So I think we should just go ahead ask Bernie to get this done for us and then we can we can weigh and balance and I am looking forward to this person who can come forward because it is a neat old building um, it really is I mean it's in ghastly shape but it it has memories and if somebody can figure out a way to use 52,000 square feet and invest an extraordinary amount of money in refurbishing the place and then also the operating costs if you think about $150 a day to get up to 40 degrees uh, for heating and so forth. I mean, those are all the things that, that we can take a look at. Um, and I don't have any problem with us spending a lot of time. We have spent a lot of time on this already. There's nothing wrong with that, and we can continue to do that, but we should have all the information we can. This really commits us to just hearing from people who could tear it down to say how much it's gonna cost. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. It was my understanding uh, when we talked about this at finance that the uh, utilities have been off down there for a couple of years. Am I correct on that? I don't even think we're heating it anymore. Is that correct, Chad? Yeah, we haven't heated it since 2014. And I have not personally taken the tour, uh, but <laughs> from the photographs that Chad presented and the utilities being off for a couple of years, uh, if, if you, uh, it's, it's terrible, the condition it's in. And just to expand a little bit on older person Donahue, not only is it coming up with somebody that has the deep pockets for the, for the uh, revitalization of the building, three to five million dollars, but just to have an organization that's gonna be able to afford the utilities as an ongoing expense in their gas, electric, that type of thing. Uh, besides the deep pockets to, uh, to rejuvenate it, it's gonna be, uh, awfully, awfully expensive to run. And I would agree, uh, I, I see nothing wrong with going ahead and at least getting the bids on this. Uh, it's not gonna cost us anything to get the bids and we'll have the bids. And then if these other development opportunities do, do not come to fruition, uh, then we're, we're set to go. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Chad, you had your hand up before. Did you have some other clarification to offer? <clears throat> I think uh, Alderman Donahue kind of addressed it, but I just want to say that any contract that's over $15,000 has to come back by policy before you guys. So 
<laughs> as she, as uh, Alderman Donahue said, it's really this is really about just finding out what this cost is going to be, so we can then figure out how we're going to finance this and move forward and develop a financing plan on our end. So I think to hold it tonight. Um, when the meeting is tomorrow with these people and we take them through the facility if they haven't been in for a number of years um, they'll see the current condition of it I think we have it's we're just gathering data as as Don, Ms. Uh, Alderman Donahue said so I would encourage you to vote for this tonight to move this forward and any contract that we uh, are going to try to get under contract with is going to come back before this body anyway so I, I don't I think we're at the point where there's a lot of, after the rain last week, uh, Bernie and I were in there and we walked through, literally my feet were soaked by the time we walked through because it's not just a small little section of the roof that's leaking, that whole Quonset area is leaking. So there's some major leaking happening in there. There was at least two to three inches of water through the whole gym floor. So there's, it's getting to the point where we need to make some significant decisions as we move forward with this facility. Thank you, Chad. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to also point out the fact that this is just to get bids, just to get things going. It'll give us in information so that we understand what it's going to cost us in the future. I also wanted to point out that if you think about it, we've, got, we've heard about some great opportunities with organizations that may be considering this opportunity to, of, the, of the center. By Continuing this process and path, it may also help them to get energy to move forward faster instead of waiting and waiting. Um, we've been working on this for years. Um, we, you know, it's unfortunate we have a, an old building that's in very bad shape. But just just to reconnect the the utilities in that is going to cost a significant amount of money just to be able to turn the gas on, turn the electric back on, and when we talk about a leaky roof and how much water damage and things like that and we've all seen the pictures just think about the mold when the heat kicks back in um, those are things that anybody trying to reoccupy a building is going to have to think about mold rot and things like that besides just getting things turned back on so even though it's a great opportunity let's think about the fact that we're trying to communicate fo follow along get information put our ducks in order as some people would say and then at least we have information to understand what we're up against moving forward in the future. It also shows anybody that's a potential um, interest, assuming that the, the armory was to be torn down, they would also see that we're moving forward in, in entertaining that and maybe come forward. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think everything's just been about said here. I just want to clarify one thing from Chad. Um, don't we already know how it's going to be paid for? And don't we already have 500,000 set aside in the 2017 budget for this project? Yes, but we have to determine what the cost is going to be and whether or not it's sufficient. Right, but mm -hmm. we know. We have some money set aside for this purpose. But we know how we're going to pay for it. Yes, that's if we, we would have to have your permission to use it for that purpose. Sure. Uh, Alderperson Robbie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we know that we want to go out and get bids for free for demolition, when's the last time we've actually acquired an RFP on it? And if so, how long ago? Because that's free as well. Chad? Yep, there, Chad. Just right sit in the corner. In 2014, we went out on RFP for the adaptive reuse of the building. At that time, over 1,000 RFPs were sent out between the city's channels, the EDC's channels, and any other channel that we had to get information out, particularly to the Milwaukee, Green Bay, and Fox Valley markets. And at that stage, as Alderman Donahue said earlier, two proposals came forward. One was C's, and one was an outside developer where they wanted us to demolish the property. So we've been out there, and I, I guess what I would say is, if there really is that much of an interest in this community to move this forward, then those people that are out there should come and talk to the city planning department, and we'll be happy to share the materials and take you on a tour and show you what the facility is like, because in the last three years, there has been very little interest other than uh, Joe Wolf and the 
Bucks issue, the Bucks thing, uh, bringing in here, that's been the only issue in the last, the only uh, entity in the last three years that has really come forward with a proposal to do a project. So if there's people out there that are interested, it now's, you know, now's the time we want to hear from you because we started this process back in 2014 and really sent out a very detailed RFP, which we'll be happy to share with the council if you guys want to see what that was. And it, it really said we have no preconceived notion as to what this building is going to be. And if you have a project, submit it. So I don't know what else we can send that whole RFP process out again and see if we you know, get different results. But at this stage, it's, <clears throat> there just hasn't been the interest. Thank you, Chad. Alderperson Robbie, <clears throat> want to follow up? Yes, thank you. The markets that you've identified are very small markets. I think you should resubmit the RFP, but to bigger markets. I know of investors on the western part of the state, even outside of the state of Wisconsin, that would jump on an opportunity like this. So if you're staying within an hour of Sheboygan, those are the wrong markets that you're actually pursuing for a project this, of this we size. It, we sent it out to Cars W, which is the statewide organization for real, commercial real estate brokers for the entire state. And it went out to all of their, their that's where the thousand, uh, d mark, the thousand leads came from, from the Car W organization that represents a fairly large area. If you have developers that you think are interested, by all means, send them my way. I'll be happy to get in contact with them and see if they're interested. These are the types of leads that we need on the building. Okay, the motion on the floor is to hold this item. <coughs> you want to Let's call the roll, please? Thank you. Seven eyes, nine no's. Uh, motion is defeated. The motion is back on the floor, and um, the motion is to. Uh, uh, adopt, accept and adopt the path and pass the resolution. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes, nine no's. Motion's defeated. Do people know how they were voting? Did people know how they were voting? And then people voted no. Is there any other motions that someone would like to make on this document? Alderperson Jose. No, I, I think, Mr. Mayor, what it may mean is some people just wanted it to be over with, so they didn't vote to hold it. They were just going to let it come to the floor and then vote no on it to, to defeat the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, just a point of, of, um, of order uh, for uh, Attorney Adams. Um, is there a way that we can reconsider this vote at this point? I'm not sure it was completely clear to everyone. Yes, someone who's, who's posit, who uh, lost, uh, one, so in this case, one of the eyes um, on the motion to accept and adopt and pass could make a, um, well, actually in this case, because it was, one it would have to be one of the nays. Yep. Um, one of the nays. One of the nays, one of the nine nays would have to uh, make a motion to reconsider. And then what would happen on the motion to reconsider? Uh, 
they would make the motion to reconsider. There would be a vote uh, to reconsider the vote. And if that vote passed, you would be able to again vote on the uh, uh, final resolution to accept and adopt. If I could just continue. Um, I, I, I think just because of the wording, and, and maybe I misunderstand this, but all we are requesting at this point is um, an I vote would allow Bernie to put out bids, I'm sorry, requests for proposals to, to give us a sense of what it would cost to tear the armory down. And so if someone may have misinterpreted that who voted nay, it would be helpful to have that person move for reconsideration at this point. Otherwise, we won't have the information that we need to know how much it, it's going to cost to tear down the building. I would also uh, put out there that if someone who voted no would like to amend the motion to eliminate the part about requests for proposals and only uh, take care of the bid document, that would be another way to handle it, and that's dealing with just part of the resolution. Uh, under discussion, Alderperson Jose. Uh, my question is to the city attorney. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, wouldn't it, aren't we just talking about a delay of two weeks if this proposal has to be put back forward again? Well, in essence, um, if nothing happens, it just sits there. So um, it's not that there would be a delay of two weeks. Some, there would have to be a, a, new, a new motion. Somebody yeah, well, would that's, have to propose that's it. It'll probably end up being more than two weeks. It could be two weeks. Okay, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In retrospect to um, Alderman um, Donahue, I then say what the difference would be to wait 30 days to have this done. So those who voted against that, if someone would reconsider and vote for it and reopen that to the floor, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? I voted for it for the no, so I can't bring a vote against it. Yes, you can. You have to. No. You, you, you voted nay. That's what we're talking about. That's yeah. what we're talking about. You can make the motion. So I can make the motion to hold this? Mm. No. no. Reconsider. I'm not interested in passing this. Okay. okay. Oh. Then, then the, the, the document will remain on committee and will proceed with the remainder of the uh, council agenda. Item 6.6 .6 is RC number 351 of 1617 by finance to whom was referred resolution number 204 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget to establish revenue and appropriation for contracted services for the fire station number two architectural and engineering services associated with the reconstruction of the roof structure and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item six point seven is RC number three fifty three of sixteen seventeen by finance, to whom was referred resolution number two oh seven of sixteen seventeen by direct referral by Alderperson Wolf approving the terms and conditions of the development agreement between the Founders Club LLC and the City of Sheboygan and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm wondering if we could just get some clarity again because I think this is the first time it's been on the agenda as to the um, particulars of this deal. How much we're borrowing to them, where the money is coming from, what will we not be able to spend the money on, and a little bit further discussion about a bridge loan. Um, my concern falls in the fact that I maybe don't have clear understanding on it, but if we're doing a bridge loan and their financing can't do the bridge loan and their bank isn't doing it, is this a good deal for the city to get involved in? So if they would just 
explain those um, questions that I just asked, and then I reserve the right to ask another question after my question is answered. Thank you. Well, Chad sensed that he was going to be needed, so he's up in front here to answer that question. <laughs> So uh, it helped me along with your questions, but just as a summary, the what it is is it's a three hundred and ninety thousand dollar loan uh, at three point zero one percent for ten years. That money is coming out of the capital projects fund. Um, that is a loan that will be given basically up front, if you will, in phase one after the for phase two improvements, but it's really the first part of the incentive of payment. The second part of the incentive payment is 390,000, um, which will be given as a forgivable loan out of the uh, TIF district. And the reason it's broken up as such is really a timing issue. So we have to amend TIF 13 to accommodate um, the incentive. And so the second phase the second part of it, the, 300, the second 390,000 um, will happen after the Joint Review Board and the Council adopts the proposal to amend TIF 13 to put this development incentive into it. Um, the the 390,000 is coming from the unreserved balance of the capital, unreserved projects, capital projects fund. Um, at this stage, I don't think there's any project that's Maybe on hold. I think there's a balance in there. Daryl would have to confirm that, but I, you know, I, it it shouldn't affect our operations. And it was this is looked at as a good a good project and a good project for the community. And the feeling was uh, to move forward out of the finance committee with an unanimous recommendation. Anything else, Alder Person Holshue? Well, I'd like to get confirmation on the the capital if if we're taking money from another program. And I understand that city staff has done an incredible amount of work with this, the Founders Club. I believe this is times three that they're presenting yet another offer. And I believe that it's um, a little above normal than what we normally do. So I have to continue to say that I'm not real comfortable with it. But where we're taking the money out of, what else would this city have used that money for if we're not donating it or not donating, loaning it to the Founders Club? Administrator I'd like to know. Hoffland? Yeah. The as part of the 2007 uh, capital projects fund budget, uh, this money is not earmarked for any specific street or any other capital projects. Uh, the staff is in the process right now of updating its five-year capital improvement plan, um, and ultimately that will be presented to the different committee, commission, and boards. So uh, it's, it's possible that there may be an earmark uh, for some of that fund balance, but at this point in time, it, there is no earmark to use at 390 for any currently identified project. Thank you for those comments. Anything else, Alderman Polshu? Um, I guess a clarity if, if we wanted to do a project like street repairs <coughs> or what projects could this money be spent on? It's not earmarked right now. Correct. But it seems to me there's the funds to be able to give it as a loan. I'd like to know how much money, that much money could we could do to be used in our city. It's my understanding that the current adopted five-year capital improvement plan does not earmark any of the fund balance uh, in the capital projects fund uh, associated with the 390,000 that would be used uh, to underwrite uh, this loan. I understand it's not earmarked. I'm asking what we could use that money for instead of this. Uh, it's up to the wishes of the Common Council if they want to add a, a project to the five-year capital improvement and use the 390000 of unallocated fund balance. Thank you. Other person born. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in preparation for the last finance meeting, I spent uh, some time on the Sunday before the meeting and went through this agreement line by line like I usually do on these agreements. And I think this is a very, very good deal for the city in partnering with uh, the, uh, the developers. I also think it's a very unique idea. Uh, I think when nursing homes become vacant, it's the type of building where coming up with a unique lease like this is, is, very, uh, is very beneficial for the community. Uh, I would hate to see that, you know, that, you, that other nursing home sit there for years and years and years and be vacant and for the, for the Schmidt brothers to come up with an innovative use, 
that's going to be a huge benefit to their to their tenants. Uh, I think it's a great thing for the city. And one part of the agreement that I, while I was reading it that I found very interesting is the city went out of its way in the agreement to see that this development stays on the tax rolls for years to come. That, that if there's a, a declaration to make this a, a nonprofit in the future where it would go off the property tax rolls, this agreement is ironclad in that regard. And I was very glad to see that. So. I'm in full support of this, and I think it's a great deal for the city. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, too, support this uh, wholeheartedly <laughs> and 100%. Uh, we've gone back and forth with this, as it's been mentioned numerous times. Um, there's been, um, it's, it's the agreement's been worked and reworked and reworked again. Uh, I think this is a good deal, both for the city and uh, the, the Schmidt brothers. Uh, as well as the entire community, the, uh, the city of Sheboygan and the county. There's employers that are relying on this project in a very tight timeline uh, for the Schmitz to get this work completed by May so that they can house the, the, the interns and uh, the seasonal work that's going to be coming to Sheboygan to um, provide uh, work and services for these employers. So um, we're, we're one of the main issues that we talk about is attracting young people to the downtown and what we can do for employers to help them assist with their workforce and their labor force. And uh, this is an outstanding, creative, ingenious idea that has come about. And I wholeheartedly support it and uh, wish the Schmitz nothing but uh, success with this. And, and hopefully they can build upon it and you know, continue it you know, someplace else. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderperson Trester. It's my understanding that we did vote as a council to give them up to a certain amount of money for this project. And now you're coming back and you're saying that we need to give more to this project. No. Um, the original request in closed session and the, it was for $780,000, up to 780,000. So we're giving it 390 and two different processes, if you will. Okay, and what happens if this project is a failure? What happens two years down the road if the project is a failure? Do we lose that money? The loan part will be paid back because that's a loan with personal guarantees. The forgivable part is strictly based on whatever new tax increment that they create, so they'll get that forgiven. So if, let's just say the project fails in two years, that forgivable piece then won't be forgiven at that full rate. Okay. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to also point out the fact I'm 100% I'm for this project. And one of the things that city leadership needs to remember, and the, the council obviously is the city leadership, is that you know the roads are very important, the infrastructure is very important, and that's why we're, we're trying to repair things with the money that we have. But there is money that we need to also put towards projects that our, our constituents work on. And this Founders Club is another a good example of it, where we've worked very, very diligently with them, partnering with them, coming up way, with creative ways to find um, opportunities to help them get this started. So like Alderman Bellinger had pointed out, this is a great opportunity. It's going to bring a lot of interns and young adults into the area. It's going to vitalize the downtown. It's going to bring people that may want to actually turn around and stay and live here. And if you think about all the apartments that are going up and the population you're going to have there compared to the Founders Club, this is a great opportunity where you're going to have a population coming in pretty much year over year month over month, uh, continuously, because of our area businesses that help make Sheboygan great need this. So this is, this is an extension of our, our businesses, and we need to support them as much as support the Founders Club and support uh, the, this development. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other discussion, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. <coughs> <coughs>
14 ayes, two noes. Motion passes. Thanks to everyone who worked on that project. It looks like it's gonna be a good one for our downtown. Next, we'll move on to ordinances. Items 7.1 through 7.3 will be referred to various committees. I, under matters laid over, 8.1 is resolution number 196 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue authorizing the submittal of a substantial amendment to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD Community Development Block Grant CDBG program for the 2016 program year and recommends <coughs> passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you. 9.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Bradley J. Curler requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1630 Blocky Court. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 9.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Anthony Curtis McDaniel <coughs> requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 828B Lincoln Avenue. That will also be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 9.3 is a uh, preliminary resolution by Alderperson Bellinger uh, declaring intent to exercise the police power to levy special assessments for the 2017 bituminous resurfacing program. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. 9.4 is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for, for professional services related to the design and project management of the replacement of the main electrical switch gear for the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility. That'll be referred to the Public Works Committee. 9.5 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2017, December 31, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.